This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high-quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. Your Creek Fire are you? Good Medicine with Joseph Kent. They just scripted to destroy. I saw this. Nice and polished botroidals. Real cool, the gentleman said it's fox turquoise? Fox, yeah, from Nevada. And then there's petroglyphs carved on the individual. Uh, there's like everything from petroglyphs to octopus to, you know, just a little bit of everything. And they're all like polished up. And definitely like hiding. You wouldn't recognize it from far away. It just looks like nice nuggy tablets. Yeah, there's a lot of nuggets that have just been accentuated, but there's little art pieces. What a blessing. Fantastic. Even this pale one right here is stunning. I love turquoise. There's little skulls on that one. You've been in the scene for a long time, right? It's a little lizard on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. How long have you been doing the gem stuff, brother? Since 2008, officially, and then I started this business in 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I worked for, I worked for a guy. Oh, oh man, must guy. have been a good mentor because you're like so above and beyond. You have such great collectible stuff. Anything anyone buys from you is not just great and collectible, it's an investment. That's my, my hope. That's cool little piece there. Thank you so much for sharing that yeah, with brother, me, my thank friend. Thank you. Thanks for sharing it. Yeah, all the handles on there on like Instagram and at the, at the Good Medicine Show. Starborn Creations. These folks are in Tucson. These folks are in the bottom floor of the Coliseum. Uh, Near like the hangar gates. I saw some of these doublets. Kind of like it. It's um definitely a doublet, not like backed with just like DefCon or something. Starborn's really cool. They bring a lot of cool carvings from Bali and stuff. Uh, all different kinds of materials. Some of the higher end materials that are a little bit more typically collected by people who collect um is there such thing as a uncommon commonly collected material right like the libyan glass and moldavites and turquoise and all that good stuff but when i think of these folks i think of their sculpture and their jewelry this is really cool it's um, a free form but because of the backing it is flat and now you would need an irregular bezel but it, um, <clears throat> it's brilliant. Like it is flat. It would set in the silver really easily. Um, like wow. Looks like a darker Campidos or something. There's a bunch of different variations in here. I think most people wouldn't even know that was turquoise unless you told them. All definitely stabilized, but stabilized has its place in the market. Not too expensive, two dollars and fifty cents a gram. There is a scale over here. Let's go, let's go weigh out this one, for instance. See what it, what is considered the big one. I think this would be considered a big one in there. Fifteen. So what? Uh, Thirty-seven dollars. That's not bad. I was just talking to a friend today about uh, small pieces. 
And I feel like when it comes to natural turquoise where you're charging one to $10 a carat, small turquoise this might be the way to go for faster sales. I mean, it's gonna take somebody special to buy your, you know, 45 gram cabochon of natural turquoise at $30 a carat, right? Stabilized stuff, definitely don't carve. Don't mind cutting bigger stuff. And there's so many different qualities of stabilized material. Here's another piece that looks a lot like Campitos. This green is pretty killer. This is the same piece that, um, same material as that other piece that had all the pyrite in it. Very cool. This is interesting. This is a doublet of Rutal. So it's Rutal quartz on top and lapis on the bottom. Um, I think it's really unique. You don't see too much of this. In the past, I've seen Rutal on top with uh, diachroic glass on the bottom or like a plume agate on top with diachroic glass on the bottom. These folks have great taste. There's some more lapis on the back. It's a little dark because the lighting in here isn't the best. They're not using the super high-end uh, rutile. I mean, why would you? If it was so saturated, you wouldn't even see the color in the back, right? Pretty unique, if you ask me. Not difficult to do. I was talking to Ethan yesterday about how he does his doublets. He uses 330 epoxy, which is actually a one-part epoxy. Very cool to see Sturborn not only having great stuff, but, you know, keep working to get more and more new and fun and creative stuff. <laughs> North American turquoise. Mm. It could be anything, really. $250 a pound, not bad. That is a lot of earrings. These folks are so fantastic. $250 a pound, not bad, even for smaller pieces. I collect every single chip of turquoise when I'm doing my song. And you, you know, the smallest piece can make two or three chip and lay rings. So this is actually a great deal. A lot of people might not understand that. Well, it's smaller. How is it worth as much as a solid piece? In some ways, this is actually worth more because um, it's tumbled and tumbling loses a lot of material. Um, any one of these little pieces could make two or three chip and lay rings. Besides all the earrings you can make, you could drill it and make beads. This is actually a great deal. And for North American turquoise, even stabilized, most of it would be $400 or more. So that's not bad at all. Starborn always has great stuff. Not so many sculptures here, like they usually do at the Coliseum, but a few. I'm used to seeing like the really cool octopuses and stuff that they get done in Bali. This is just night and day compared to some of the tchotchke skulls that you'll see around. Very cool, anatomically correct, mossy agate there. Very cool material I am not familiar with. A little less anatomical, anatomically correct. Pretty cool. And then she had a friend. So these folks are not just at the Coliseum in Denver. They're um, in a few different spots in Tucson. They're in River Park for sure. Very super kind people. Super hip. They know their material. They're not just hiring people who just to sell stuff. The people here at Starborn. Um, no, there's stuff, and it's really nice to see. Good help is hard to find, right? Dendritic cabs. I love flat top cabochons. This actually looks like it is a doublet. Maybe not, no. The plume kind of just stops. 
But I love flat top cabochons. These are um, definitely tumbled. You can tell by the polished scratches on the back, which is fine. Uh, fine artists might want to flatten that out, but the girdle is well established. So every single piece here is ready to be put into silver, but it just saves so much time. And they're allowed to, you know, sell you the pieces that they sell you for the price that they sell you because it's mass produced. They shape it, throw it into a tumbler. Um, that's why you get the polished backs. I'm going to be mass producing cabochon soon, and then what I'm going to do is get my stones like this, you know, scratches to be polished, then I'm going to flatten the backs, nice satin finish, reestablish the girdle, and then take the stones to like whatever final polish you need, like cerium or, um, oh, uh, Lindy or whatever. Let's get their card. I don't know if they sell online. But uh, the card's definitely still worth having because they sell at the Denver, the main Denver show in September. They sell in Tucson, a few different places, and they probably sell other places. I'm sure they have an Instagram. How do you shop for labradorites, folks? Well, you hold it straight up and down. In the flash, what you see is what you get, right? If you have to hold it at a certain angle to get that super flash, it's a little bit of a tough sell. Not that it's not worth what they're selling, but. I like the cards here. I've been selling my caps in cards with a nice plastic with a gummy seal. <laughs> and even though I love the look, a lot of people don't believe me that I'm actually cutting them because I think this look lends itself to like mass-produced Hong Kong or the Philippines or something, but I think it's really These are great. I'm always talking about these. These are um, ammonites with uh, turquoise inlay. I do like the solid. The solid's a much more designer look, but I think the chip inlay is a slightly cooler look for this and it would actually be easier um, ammonites can be very affordable, even in the piratized form. Um, I beg your pardon, ma'am. So when you folks are in Tucson, besides River Park, you guys do a couple venues, right? We used to. We're now completely in Tucson. We're completely at Jogs. Oh, cool. Yeah. Which is nice. I heard they open up to the public and you can just pay a fee now instead of having... Yes. That's so nice for Jogs. Yeah. It was packed. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we have all of our, we also used to do the gem mob, but now since COVID, we keep it all at jobs. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's more convenient for the customers. I wish they'd make it just a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's still Absolutely. good. It starts a little bit early, and so. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I would love a card if it's okay yeah. with you. Dave, are you working? All right. We're here at Brian's booth. Don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> Mineral West. Beautiful agate card. Um, yeah, they got a Facebook. Check them out. Really great display. What caught my eye is uh, this bare eye calcite I'll show you in a second. Oh, that's cool. Is that from? Yeah, definitely from Colorado. It just has that Colorado look. Crystal Peak area. Look at this amethyst. That is from Uruguay. The Rotocosa, it's totally interesting. Is it from Peru? No, it's actually from Colorado. Uh, supposedly in northern New Mexico, near the Ojo Caliente area, there's Rotocosa just lining the road. Uh, just past Ojo Caliente, going into another town through a canyon. 
and my friends have shown me some stuff that they just harvested off the ground. Nothing this beautiful in mineral form, but um, pretty cool. And I'd love to go find it, if, even just some like dirty little sa sample specimens. These folks have great taste. And here's the piece I really wanted to show you folks. It's a spectacular. This is a weird looking Veracruz. Oh, it's not from Veracruz, it's from Guerrero. I think when people think of Mexican amethyst, you think Veracruz, right? But that's from Guerrero, Mexico. Real trippy. It's like wispy. This is something cool that I've only seen once other than here. And this is um, green petrified wood, chromium petrified wood. I saw a little bit of this at the, um, what was it? Uh, Jim Gray's Petrified Wood Store in Arizona near the Rainbow Forest. Real trippy. I wonder how hard it is. It uh, looks silicated. The top does look a little crumbly, but if you look, it did take a great polish. And most things won't take a great polish if it's not hard enough to polish, right? Must be pretty rare. What was Oh, Navajo County, Winslow. Yeah, that's the same area as uh, Winslow, I believe, is near the Petrified Forest. C correct me if I'm wrong, folks. Navajo County, Arizona. Just brilliant, 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 brilliant. This Portuguese um, quartz is great, too. Little hard to tell. There we go, we can peek through like that. These folks have great taste. A lot of people here do, honestly, this show is great. I did go to that other tent over there and it was all wholesale. So, you know, a lot of tchotchkes and stuff besides um, Starborn, but it's still fun. There's some great taxidermists. This quartz with hematite not turning it red, from China, from Wodong. Look at that fluorite with galena. Is galena lead? Is it a different type of metal? Wow, the selenite is great. It's like bursting with blades. That Druzy Quartz on Crystal Cola is great. Totally uh, scenic, huh? From Scott Mountain, the Ray Mine. Now, this stuff here, at first I thought it was the Tanzarine, which I think is from Tanzania or Namibia or something but it's strawberry quartz from Mexico, from Chihuahua. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, folks, I think it looks way better than the tanzarine. Which, uh, to my knowledge, tanzarine is actually a quartzite. It's kind of a trade name to sell quartzite as faceting rough. But uh, this stuff is actually really cool, terminating crystals.
do stuff with Zacatecas. I used to live in Zacatecas in my youth. I still play some of the stuff from guitar that my uncle taught me when I lived over there when I was a kid. The licks. Survive. That is beautiful. Although I'm going to take it out of frame, I will zoom in just a little bit. That is beautiful. And uh, very affordable for how big it is. You would think it would be three times that price. When I first saw this, I thought it was the uh, Howlite from uh, Trona. It's definitely different. A little hard to film, honestly. There's so much going on there. Mangan Calcite? From Peru. Very cool. Just an awesome Russian material. Love the Russian material. A lot of people were under the impression that a lot of Russian material is hard to get due to the current political climate. Um, I have some friends that say that's not necessarily true. Might depend. Different materials that might be in like more drastic conflict zones. Maybe. Well, it has to be, right? This stuff kind of screams, don't touch me. These are cool. Jade slicks, wow. So if you don't know what these are, these are wind slicks. Check out my video um, of chatting with uh, Shane or Sean Zock from Freshwater Jade. And we talk a little bit about these Jade Slicks. He says he never had the pleasure of finding one of these. A lot of you folks might be seeing these and thinking, oh wow, that is one of the most unimpressive Jades I've ever seen. Well, these are very special. These are polished by the wind. And they're super rare. And you would never, ever want to cut this stuff. It would just be totally sacrilegious to the how long it took to, to be made and perfectly polished by nature. I'm gonna have to buy one of these. Do you take a card by chance? So. Now, you know me folks, I'm not after the biggest one. Never after the biggest one. I want character, and personality, right? Size doesn't always matter. It's if it makes me laugh or not. If they make me laugh and, and I have a stable job and I want the ones that look the most slicky. These are cool. And we're back. We got the little wind slick. Lynn was gifted one of these by our good friend Acacia, who's a um, plant medicine genius. She travels all around the world doing research and hosting seminars and stuff. Definitely check out Acacia. She's stunning for um, how old she is and what she's doing. Beautiful Laguna and uh, it's straight up the saw. Whoever slabbed this had such a good saw and they have it so finely tuned that um, it's, it's leaving satin finishes, which is like saving so much time for the artist who's going to go back and try to flat lap this or whatever. However, there are a few record grooves in here. Those little lines right there. It's not really taking away from the satin finish. I'll tell you the truth. When I saw it, I did not know that it was a satin finish. I just knew it was a big, beautiful Laguna. No quartz. The way I like it. I don't like quartz centers. And uh, to my knowledge, I think those devalue the material beautiful piece out of Chihuahua I believe yep I have some good stories on this material I have to tell you folks during a live sometime 
absolutely stunning. Um, because of its size, you definitely would want to vibro lap it or use a, a Richardson ranch or a bull wheel to polish that. But um, definitely would polish up really nicely. I don't think that fracture on the side would really bother it too much. Where is this from? Rio Grande do Sul from Brasil. Calcite on amethyst, green amethyst. So in our other video yesterday, we were at New Era. We were talking about irradiated green amethyst. Amethyst can come naturally green. I don't know if I brought that up in that video, but it can happen. I mean, not every, you know, there's a reason why it, it can be turned that color, but uh, it is natural in some forms. The tips on these are great. Yes, safe and sound. Oh, that's a little too difficult for me to take out right there, so I'm gonna leave that alone. What is this, the nickel blend or schiston blend? I've heard this material called a few different colors. I mean, a few different names. From Poland. Um, fluorescent orange. I wonder what's in it's turning orange. Is it the, is it the yellow in here? Now, when I first saw this material, I kind of just saw flats like this. I am starting to see cabochons, and I have seen this material kind of go up a little bit, not drastically, not dramatically at least, but um, but quite a bit, maybe double in the last 10 years. Well, no, because we were buying stuff like this maybe eight years ago for $30, $40. It, obviously, since it's super high and metal, it's undercutting a bit because of whatever their polishing process is, but I love that. I was talking to Ethan Schultz yesterday, and he was talking about his dinosaur bone undercutting and how he likes it. I think it looks great. I think it really looks great. The undercutting is, is fantastic. It gives it some dynamics. These are Russian starlights, right? Are they from Georgia? They're from Russia. All right. Was just talking to Tom. I don't know if my interview with Tom and the Rocky Mountain markets before or after this part of the video, but we were just talking about starlights on his page from the Rocky Mountain Marketplace, which is a verified kind of rock vendor only website, kind of like Etsy, but just for rocks hosted by the lady that runs this venue. Uh, he had some Tau Starlights, and we were talking about how we think Taos has the best Starlights. These are definitely on par, though. Uh, these are way better than a lot of things I find over there. The best Starlights I've ever found were not found, that I, that I have were not found by me. It looks like the mica schist or whatever's going on in there is a lot. Um, It looks like it has less garnet, if any garnet at all, like the Tau stuff has. From Kiev. Is that how you pronounce it? Some people call it Kiev, right? I think most Americans know how to pronounce that place by now. Whoa, that is a beautiful big piece of sugelite. Now people might say, David, why is it so affordable for how big it is? Um, you can see the other black there. So Sujolite comes in a lot of different varieties. Uh, grades, rather. There's probably 
shoot. Well, it's, it's, I would just be coming up with a number, but it can go from very black to extremely translucent purple. Um, it can go from a dollar a gram to well over $30 a gram. This is a combination of a few. I'm not gonna lick this guy's rock, but it looks like all the stuff that we would see in cutting material would be on the top here. But the back is more black and it has the red stuff. Now there's something called Richterite inside of here. I don't know what's the Richterite. Is it the red? Is it the black? I don't know. But um, 115 for the quality, not a bad price. You definitely get your money back. Kind of use it as like a natural double. Like keep that as the pack and cut the top. But um, it's being sold as a specimen piece. However, you can definitely tell somebody cut this. It looks like it was cut on a tile saw. Not the cleanest, but such a rock hard material that um, even with the super aggressive sawing, it's still kind of glossy still. A lot of people have been bugging me about finding Vivianite during the la this year's Tucson show. $20 a piece for these pieces from Brazil. Um, this material can be very affordable in larger cluster form. Really cool, this one's got like a twist. What is that? Smithsonite, kind of weird. Some Morganite. Now that is a silicated crystal cola if I've ever seen one, right? Uh, I guess not, right? It's not a silicated crystal cola. It's more like the crystal cola inside of the silica. It's crystal cola inside of quartz instead of quartz inside of crystal cola, right? Or is it the other way around? That looks great. Pyromorphite. What a trippy looking material. Looks like some peat moss. Looks like they have a few pieces of the Venetonite in larger cluster form. So this is less common. That's nice. Uh, I'm used to seeing just more of like a bursty cluster, not so much the host rock and the secondary minerals on top of it. Ludlamite. Looks like this Ludlamite is what is crystallized on that Vivianite. Are we learning anything here? I know I am. This is awesome. This uh, Dolomite right there. little tabbies and then um indica light tourmalines from brazil 48 dollars each now do you folks like the shorter fatter ones for 48 bucks or do you like the longer skinnier ones i like the middle the middle the middle ones So over here we have some dry head agate. Um, this material can be expensive, much like the Laguna. What you want is, you know, the agate formations, right? The host rock is weird. Is it rhyolite, kind of like a thunder egg? I don't know. Shopping for somebody. No. I'm just amazed too. Yeah, I have an educational YouTube channel where I go to all the you bigger do? Yeah, I go to the bigger oh gem shows in America gosh, and really? film stuff. Teach people how to make gemstone jewelry and stuff. Yeah. Oh that's amazing. <laughs> What's your who are you? That's uh Lapidary Dave on YouTube. Lapidary Dave. Jenny. 
you need to follow Lapidary Dave. Yeah, you gotta follow Lapidary Dave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you too. Did you go to the big Denver one? Oh yeah, I go to Tucson and I try this to go. Looks you know what? I am extremely impressed by this show. Yeah, oh, this is the first booth. <laughs> oh, you just got here, huh? <laughs> well, they put these guys in a great spot. Yes. Oh, I know. You walk, we came in that door and we're like, ooh, it's gorgeous. Did you see that case down there yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be distracting. Have a great day. Thank you. Left Dairy Dave. Yep, Left Dairy Dave. So this Ontario Canada material, I think Jim bought a piece of this, not this big, to cut. Um, what do you polish it with? Do you polish it with like a Zam, since Zam is like a metal polish to begin with? This, it's definitely natural, it's not like a clear coat or anything, but me Miner has some great videos on cutting native silver and working it. Now, for how beautiful it is, it makes a total mess of your machine. Just black juice all over your machine. But totally worth it. That's not a bad price for what that is. I bet you it'd be really easy to make your money back on that. Some beautiful Russian meteorites. This one's got some great character. Somebody told me that. Um, some meteorites they chill with nitrogen and then shatter them? I don't know about it. Maybe the gentleman who runs this booth would. I mean, you can't run this booth without being absolutely brilliant about minerals, right? And then where you see meteorite, there's usually other meteorites or Olivian glass and moldavites and other tektites, and they keep all the space stuff together, right? A few different kinds. This one's from Arizona, 200 bucks. I was talking to my friend who um, is a president of a rock shop and I was, we were talking about how um, there's a certain type of people out there and they're kind of abundant that think that every rock that they're finding is a meteorite. And, uh, you know, they're always going out trying to find somebody to say, yeah, that all those rocks you brought back from the desert are meteorite. Well, that's really rare. Most of the time they're not. Every once in a while, yes, they might be. And I think somebody took a rock to the rock shop that actually was, and it was fantastic. This is something different right here. Um, will it look more metallic when it's wet? Maybe. I don't know, I'm definitely not gonna lick it. It is from doesn't say. Maybe they don't know. Found in 1999 though, that's good enough. Good enough for me. Yep, just like I said, the tectites will be around it. Are these Del Campos? Yep, they are Campo Campos. These, I think they say these are the most abundant meteorites in the world. Uh, makes sense because they're very affordable, you know. Looks like most of the things here on this side are under $50. <laughs> Even this big honker here is only about 200 bucks. When I was doing some research on this material to make a video on TikTok, um, I was reading some article that when Argentina... Well, when, was it Spain or Portugal was doing like the, you know, colonizing of Argentina or whatever, that they were wondering, well, I guess they banned weapons from the indigenous people or something, or they didn't know where the metal was coming from that the indigenous people were making their weapons out of. And it ended up being this huge deposit of meteorite. All the iron they were working to make their weapons were made out of this meteorite. And uh, I don't know if they were smelting them, where they, because it's a lot easier to heat metal up to work the metal than it is to like 
to melt it down to um, cast and stuff, you know what I mean? Anyway, an abundant meteorite, a affordable meteorite, like, you know, this is five times heavier than that one and five times cheaper. Must have been really hard for the indigenous folks in uh, Argentina getting bossed around by the Comandantes, right? That is trippy. Real gar on quartz. That is just a supernatural color. Very awesome. Saw a lot of this this year in Tucson at uh, Mineral City. Um, sometimes you'll see signs that say do not film and one of the only signs I saw at Mineral City that I asked people not to film or take a, pictures of, take a picture of was this material, a huge cluster of this from Colombia. The vendors were from Colombia and they didn't want anybody taking pictures of it. I don't know why. It doesn't matter why. I don't ask why. <laughs> you know, if folks don't want something filmed, that is good enough for me. But um, a huge one. Here's a big chunk of rhodochrosite from Brazil. Now, when I was telling you folks earlier about the rhodochrosite that was on the side of the road, um, in Taos, I imagine it's mineralized like this. Beautiful. You don't really want to cut it. You'd want to leave it alone. That is a amazing piece of charite. Charite um, can be very affordable, and certain varieties, a piece that size could be 10, 20 bucks. But that is a very, very great pattern. Cool jemmy variation, worth every penny of what they're charging. Um, it's a material that I've seen kind of get a little bit more affordable over the years instead of a little bit more expensive. Is that because all of the good stuff is what was brought when it was first being shown to the public? And now the new stuff has all the weird clear spots and a lot of the black in it and it all comes in blocks now and stuff. Is that what's making it more affordable? I don't know. But, um, yeah. So this, this fine folks here, not all of their best stuff is in these showcases. They have tons of great stuff just here in the trays. Man, I would, if I was going to be selling stuff as a, like a vendor, I would want to do minerals. Because so much more fun than having a booth full of cabochons waiting for an artist to come by. Because, you know, not everybody here is an artist. But, you know, anybody here would be willing to start collecting, right? We all are here to see beautiful things. A couple of us might be here to, like, buy things for their mom and pop rock shop or their gift store or something. But I would definitely want to be a mineral dealer over a jewelry supply person. Back in the day, um, I used to do silversmithing for all of the pieces that I would make. And I would, you know, finish everything. And I got kind of successful for doing the lapidary thing. And I don't even feel like an artist sometimes, just making cabochons to sell to somebody to uh, then put my piece into their piece. You know, definitely I don't feel like a jeweler and rarely do I feel like an artist. I mean, it is an art, someone like Ethan, Going above and beyond, taking it to the next level. You know, like it's it's fine art, but I don't know. I think you guys get where I'm coming from. I tell people somebody mining, you know, is going out there breaking their back, spending their time, spending all this gas to get a material to sell you for a hundred dollars a pound or four hundred dollars a pound, right? 
as a lapidary, you're cutting the turquoise for $400 a pound, uh, selling it for a dollar a carat. So you're getting $2,000 a, a kilo, you know. Uh, so it's a, what, just a little bit under $1,000 a pound? Never mind. <laughs> anyway, the jeweler makes all the money, right? The jeweler is the person taking the miner's hard work, the lapidary's hard work, and then with $4 worth of silver, artistic eye expertise and touch and design, turning that um, $3 worth of rough, $40 worth of cab into a $300 necklace, bracelet, or whatnot, you know? So I got to get back to that. That's where I really want to be again. I think it's a great time. What is it? Uh, iridescent hematite from Pahang, Malaysia. It's awesome. Is it, it's, is it uncommon? I don't think I've ever seen it before. But it's found at Graves Mountain in Georgia as well. Um, oh, I have seen that before though. Definitely seen the Graves Mountain material. It's super affordable for how beautiful it is. <laughs> a little hard to film because of how brilliantly blue it is. Very cool. You have all kinds of great stuff. What's your favorite piece in the booth? Definitely this one. It's a weird one. Uh, fluorite dodecahedrons with quartz on Lollingham. And a rare arsenic mineral. Awesome. Only really found in Wangong. And I love how they're just perched right on top of you from the side. It's got like a cave. They're barely just perched on top of that. Is Wangong known for their minerals? Yeah, Wangong uh, produces uh, fluorite and quartz combos. Uh, it's one of the deposits next to Yindu. So they have great fluorite, calcites. Um, is the green fluorite that is a little bit more affordable that I see all around, is that from Wangong? Yeah, they also have the pink octahedrons. Oh, fantastic. Uh, those are from Wangong as well. All right, Stone Throne was super kind of um, was super kind enough to let me uh, take a look at their cases. I'll be honest, folks, it is really intimidating talking to fine mineral collectors. This Nambian um, copper crystal is fantastic. Lens or a microscope? Yeah. Most of them don't move, but they both move. Beautiful Smith tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's just water. I'm gonna have to check them out, yeah. That Crystal Cola is awesome. That's all I got. Or if you got 15, whatever change you have. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a five, so. Perfect. <laughs> I know, I know the feeling. All right, man. So this, this calcite variation of cobalton, cobalton, some people call it cobalto calcite. Uh, most of the time you'll see it in mineralized form, but I was gifted like a chunk of it as cutting rough. And I was making some cabs. It doesn't have the beautiful druzy like this, but it's still really cool. Most of the people that I see that cut this, it's almost sacrilegious because it's such a great specimen. They're just cutting it to shapes that they want and then leaving the druzy on top. Very cool piece. I'm not used to seeing the black on there, but um, I think it'd be exciting to see some of the uh, cobalto calcite as cutting rough come to the States. It looks just like dyed, like halide or something pink. Uh, the, the crust, the, um, not this obviously, but the um, cutting rough, but it is natural. And pretty cool, I got that from uh, K&A Artisanal after filming their video, they gave me a little piece. This is something special right there. The 
this Polish pyrite on barite is just alive. Totally cap. How long have you been in the business, brother? Uh, five years. Really? Yeah. You must have really good friends then. <laughs> because this is way above average. Oh, I just reinvested all of my money back into the business. Oh, dang. All the time, yeah. I've only been doing minerals for three years, so making stands for the uh, Stands for like bigger stuff or for all different types? Everything, yeah. For all oh, the bases and stuff, that's my main thing. You made these? Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's my main business. What? Yeah, the, the rocks <laughs> to show off. You must know. have, well, this, the stands probably pay the bills, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do year round, is the stands. That's fantastic. And so people can contact you if they want like a custom engraving or anything? Yeah, yeah like engraving, they carve to fit the stand. Oh, awesome. Something flat on top that they can mount their specimens oh, to. Where are you out of? Uh, I'm in the process of moving to Tucson right now. Oh, okay. You're going to be pretty busy. In a good spot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you should you can be making them for like Ark and Stone and like... So they just... have their own base maker for, for their stuff. But yeah, all the big dealers and stuff. That's half my customers and the half the collectors. Oh, that is awesome. Have you ever, um, I guess there's probably no demand for any other color besides clear, right? Because it would kind of mess with the... Uh, I do black too, like this needle light. Oh, yeah. Black, and sometimes that can really help things pop. Is it acrylic? Yeah. Black acrylic or clear acrylic. So is it like lasers or something? Uh, so I do, yeah, laser engrave the, the front and the color for it. Oh, awesome. This gentleman's glass is so clear here. It almost doesn't look like you have any glass, but that's the point, huh? <laughs> that's a wild looking Venadenite. Venadenite? Venadenite? Oh, look at that little silver crystal. Its card is pretty big over here on the side. The little curly little mushroom looking thing an extraterrestrial seed petroleum included quartz packamer right That Spanish little twin is fantastic. Super cool. Definitely check out Stone Throne on Instagram. The gentleman's only been going for five years. He's already got an incredible collection of stuff. Uh, definitely worth Checking them out online. Gypsum hourglass selenite. Florent? Is that similar to uh, Yitrium? Like the purple stuff that people carve and sear and stuff? Yeah. 
Uh, it's from Guangzhou. I think that's how you pronounce it. Is that Guangzhou? It's G U I Z H O U? I gotta be completely wrong. <laughs> Collector's Edge was kind enough to let us film just a little bit. Just wanted to take a peek at some of this beautiful rotocrosite. The rotocrosite is from Colorado, believe it or not. That is just brilliant ruby red. What I really wanted to show you folks, besides those beauties, is how they're matching up the aquamarine with the rotocrosite. Very, very cool. Awesome. So brilliant. Center one's got a lot of light, a little difficult to see. But uh, they're all great. I mean, where in Colorado? It's uh, Alma Park? Sweet home mine. Interesting. All right, we are here taking a look at our friend Sidewinder Minerals Goods. I met this gentleman at the Albuquerque show. And what caught my eye was this. I'm like, what kind of agate or jasper is that? I picked it up and held it to the light. It's rhodochrosite. Now, a lot of rhodochrosite doesn't really yield. This stuff is yieldable goods right there. Okay. Looks like it cuts really well. I know it does. You can see the record marks on there from the big saw. Even where it was fractured, it uh, sawed really nicely. 300 bucks for this. I think that's a really good price. Um, you can orient the cuts that way, a couple of them, I guess. But you really want the banding, right? Almost looks like an agate. The chatoyance inside of a rotocrosite actually goes away after a while. After so, after getting so, after polishing it so much and it getting so fine. Check this out, this beautiful Laguna. Now, those folks over there, Lagunas, were um, the unfinished one. I think that was, there's 750 or 950. This one is 450 and it's polished all the way around. This was probably worked, you know, more than a decade ago, 20, 30 years ago. Such a weird, unique style of polishing. I do not think it was tumbled. The bands are super rich. Let's see if I can hold it right. And try to get a thumbnail out of that. We'll hold it over there. Come on. <laughs> very, very cool. Here's another piece of Laguna from Chihuahua. Very affordable. We want to lay it to where people can see. Yeah, I get this one's $150. Now, this material can cost $150 rough. So, I do think it's um, affordable. Because of the fractures going through it but it is still super beautiful i was blessed enough to get some laguna um like small halves maybe that size from mr de los santos out of argentina um at the tcc show for a dollar and from like the malawis that i'm working i'm going to be making like some earrings and some some doublet cabochons and stuff but Definitely going to be practicing on my Richardson Ranch with that. The Smithsonite from Sinaloa, Mexico. It just looks like a little ocean in your hand. One of the minerals I just know nothing about whatsoever. some of the cobalto calcite this is from the congo right from morocco i thought it all came from the congo i had no idea 
very cool. This fluoride over here. Phantom Bicolor Zoned Cave and Rock Subdistrict, Harding County, Illinois. Yeah, beautiful zoning. Beautiful phantom. That is a treasure right there, for sure. Absolutely stunning. This little amethyst to lactite slice. Another piece of that Russian. Um, <laughs> it's the Russian starlight. Look at these. Chumpy stone? Card for meteorites? By the descendants of the Incas? So this is... Oh, descendants of the Incas. So this is meteorite carved by the modern day indigenous folks. Very cool. I'm gonna have to remember to make a TikTok video out of this. I'm gonna hold it straight up because TikToks are that way. Just gonna hold it sideways for a few moment. There we go. Very cool. All right, we have some cool slabs here. <clears throat> Twelve dollars, that's less than like a drink <laughs> here, less than a cocktail. Russ Baker. I do hear that it takes special blades to um, cut this material. Is it, um, was it uh, nickel boron, much like meteorites, maybe? But for how affordable it is, that would make a stunning cabochon. Here's another piece, I'm not gonna take it out. It's 500. Or is it? <laughs> I don't know. What's right? Is it the handwritten stuff or is it the tag? Because it's kind of reversed on this where the handwritten is a little bit more affordable than the sticker. Tough to tell. Maybe the tag 
it's explaining what it is because it's also from there and the handwritten stuff is what is relevant. It's a weird piece of opal from Nevada. Fluoresces green. I thought it was uh, mammoth ivory. Very, very cool. All right, we're here talking with Tom Barley with Rocky Gems. It's a marketplace for buyers and sellers, verified people, with real material. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing pretty good, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for chatting with me. Um, you were just telling me about this uh, Rocky Gems Marketplace. It's brilliant, you know, it's a safe place to buy, especially nowadays where people are just taking pictures of stuff, of other people's products and reselling them, uh, stuff you're never gonna get, or even, you know, buying something that you think you're gonna get and it's completely different. Right. Uh, yeah, can you just tell us about Rocky Rocky Gems Marketplace? So, Sandra Gonzalez, who who runs the the Denver show, uh, basically started this pre-pandemic as a place for a lot of her vendors to be able to put their items online um, and for customers to come and uh, and buy while there was interruptions during the uh, pandemic. So now it's a great place. It's no different than like Etsy or eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you can sign up and upload your uh, gems and minerals and have customers come to your shop. You can go and search around for specimens that, you, that you've been wanting or jewelry. Um, there's online video tutorials for wire wrapping and uh, PDF tutorials. Um, how to make certain jewelry, so it's it's a place to learn, it's a place to gather with online and in person, um, and then buy and sell um, fossils, rocks, meteorites, gems, jewelry, art pieces made out of um, stones. Um, um, so, so, first of all, do, do you have to live in Colorado, Denver area? No, your audience is the world, the community is the world, so Fantastic. anyone with an internet connection can join us. And you were mentioning like eBay, Etsy and stuff. There's a lot of vendors on there, but not all of them, like there's so much room for like uh, not complete honesty and stuff. Like, right. you know, they take a picture of one product, you're getting something else. And Etsy, you know, and eBay, they're not just catered towards gems. This is 100%, Yeah, this is you know, specifically the whole gem, um, gem world. Whereas... You're not going to get, like, uh, crocheted rugs. Right. Or, like, uh, like uh, moccasins and warachas and stuff like that. Well, I think even Etsy, you wind up, um, even though it started out as a handmade marketplace, everybody on Etsy, you could sell vintage things that, that's only, like, 30 years old, so... People resell retail there, and here everything's pretty much unique because there are artist creations or sp specimens that are no no two are alike. You know, even those who have like thirty selenite wands, every wand is different. Every right? single yeah. one, right? Yeah. And if you just take a picture of the stack, um, unfortunately, most people are gonna want to get rid of the least best ones, especially when exactly. there's a thousand miles in between the people and stuff like that and so it is nice to just take to have a gallery of individuality and when it comes to specimens like that um so is there a fee and is there an application so process the first um was it 200 300 um the first 200 items um there's no fee to put them on up if you if you want to go from 201 to 1,000 items, I think it's a one-time $25 fee. That's nothing. Which is nothing. Like Because you think about Etsy charges 70? 20, 20 cents per listing plus, then they take their commission. Mm -hmm. So she takes an 8% commission off of your sale, and then you, know, you have to pay for the credit card charge. But she has an instant way to, to print out shipping when you sell an item. And um, uh, she handles the sales tax. 
um, with all the different states. So if somebody buys something in Arizona, she files the state tax for you. So it means collected from the customer when they come in, you know, buy. Fantastic, because that's really intimidating for a lot of new buyers and sellers. Oh, and, and yeah, especially new. So you just started to open your rock shop and you don't want to have to deal with taxes and stuff <laughs> and all these. And Europe's gotten crazy with their their new you know, settings. So. Oh, I, that's a good good thing to mention. Is Rocky Gems set up to deal internationally? It is. It is. Oh, fantastic. Uh, you know, postage is a lot higher to go international, so the cheaper postage is in the U.S. But yeah, we have buyers and sellers and around the world. So. Um, is, so, besides the fee, is there an application process? Um, so there is an application, so if you go to the front page and click on um, registration, you fill out the form and you have to send us a, a couple photos of what you intend to sell so that we make sure it's the right fit. And then once you're, once you're approved, we send you a guide with a step-by-step with screenshots of showing you how to sell up your shop and how to make a listing. And if, if you need more assistance, we have an online Zoom class for 60 bucks that will we'll show you, step, walk through the whole process with you. You know why that is fantastic? Because, so, like, the eBay, the Amazon, the Etsy, the Marketplace, there's all these people who are out there to scam you, and then what do they do? They just delete the account, make another one. The, right. the application process is going to stop people from just jumping back into the game after they rip somebody off. You know what I mean? This, this seems like this website's already catering to, to keeping that from happening. And it's, it's very community-based. So it's a lot of the vendors that are here at these shows. So we know who who's selling with us. That is awesome. I mean, we do get some vendors that don't vend at our shows and we, we never, you know, haven't met, but we screen mm -hmm. them, we see what products That's they That's so have, important, so. you know what I mean? And there's so many things that are red flags that you can see, you know, from looking somebody up. You can demand some photos or some videos of the product, or even just a simple phone call. And, um, yeah, so you guys, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and, uh, and the vendors don't get paid until we get the delivery confirmation, so we make sure that customer gets their item. Oh, there you go. So that cuts That's out those, it. those scammers. That's it. They can't, you know, they won't make anything if they didn't deliver. So. And so this is, um, so this right here, this is like a, this is the website. Yeah, this is what it looks enough, like. That's my, my little shop. Really? Uh, and you, you got these from, from so, did you go find these in Taos? I did. I found I, those in are Taos. You, do you go there a lot? Um, I used to. I uh, live in Taos. Do you really? Yeah, I live on, I live on uh, Iototo and El Prado. So I, I either collect them there, and I, sometimes I buy them from Native Americans on the bridge. I, ne I, can, I, can never buy, I can never find anything as good as I can buy from there. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, I, I, I it's feel a, like it's a great, great And place, it, they, so. it's usually so affordable there. I tell people, you get the starlights out of Taos, you're quadrupling your money. Right. One and a half, one and a quarter inches is worth no less than 200 bucks when you get out of Taos, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're some of the best. So. I think they're the coolest starlights. Some people will, will, will go to the mat over that. Right. But I like those the most, dude. That's awesome. Definitely awesome. And that's a crazy great price for what this is. So if folks that don't know what's going on here, it's like a mica on there, right? Well, and garnet, yeah. Yeah, those dots are actually garnets. Garnet inclusions in them, which, which is great. Some kind of aluminum crystal? I think so. I mean, depending on where you get the starlight. So I've also been to Starlight State Park. On, I think it's in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, Near Savannah or something, right? Yeah, it's actually their state stone. Um, so they have a, like, they're almost kind of a brown and, um, or a tan color, and so they have different inclusions in theirs. All of my starlight is, comes from, um, Taos, but when I was in, um, the Czech Republic, I was looking at some of the starlight there, and it was just even more phenomenal. Oh yeah, those are like, almost brown, right? And they're like, more yeah. like a multiplication sign. Right, right, exactly, yeah, they, it has the X's, right? Folklore goes, I mean, the Celtic Cross ones has a lot of Christian mythology. The X's have a lot of fairy and elven lore behind them. So is there a place on the screen, if I'm looking at your product, to find more of your product from this screen? Yeah, so you basically go to the stores. Um, 
So you know, basically from the home page, you would click on stores and you'd be able to see all the different um, vendors that we have here. Oh, I meant um, from that from that last screen, because on the bottom it showed three oh, yeah. different things. S selling of similar. Is there a link to more of your product on that sales page that yes. we just jumped from? Yes. Okay, cool. I didn't see it, but I, I don't really know what I'm looking at. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, I was just gonna go to the, the stores. You know, it's actually kind of a simple idea with so many things that could go wrong. Right. And it's a, it's a, one of the simplest ideas, but one of the hardest things to do. I, I nobody, I, I am not surprised Sarah is doing it. Like, she's brilliant. And um, you had a lot to do with the design, right? Right, I helped her, she, it was her idea, and she had a, a a preliminary one on, I think, Shopify or um, another um, platform, and it wasn't really working, so we went with um, WordPress, and it makes it very easy for the vendors to be able to create their shops with and kind of login and, and post and, and whatnot. Is this a full-time job for you? It doesn't seem like it's very it, easy. It, at Sometimes it is a full-time job for me, so <laughs> I, I run my own web, web company, but most of my work goes into the Rocky Gems for sure. So uh, we're here at the title page. Can you show us a little bit of what's going on here? Okay, so you can go to, you know, the better screen would be the laptop. Nice. Um, Let me scoot it over a little bit. Probably better for the camera there. Um, so you can go to stores here and see every one of the vendors. You can also search by minerals or fossils or meteorites. Um, and then um, Sidewinder Minerals has a booth down towards the doors. He he does a mineral a month, um, every, every month, so you can actually see, uh, you can read about a different gem. So you were, you were asking about my shop and um, you can be able to see all the different starlight that that I carry. Um, so this is mine, Technotique Treasures. And the internet, unfortunately, is oh, here, you don't have to tell the, me. Uh, at the so yeah, it's not the website, folks. It's the internet. And so while we're waiting for the, and there's a thousand people using it right now. Right. Um, so, okay, we're here. So yeah, so you can see the different starlights that I have. I have things for kids, like crystal growing kits and... Fantastic. I used to live in Roswell, New Mexico, so I used to collect some desert roses. And, so and a lot awesome. of it is, is what I've collected and, and whatnot. But so a lot of the dealers here, like I said, so we have Susan who does online tutorials or uh, PDF packages, how to do wire wrapping and whatnot. So you can buy online classes, you can buy eBooks, you can do, um, learn from other community members how to do certain things. Like someday I'd like to do some online lapidary um, courses, mm -hmm. I used to do. Um, um, if somebody who was an educator or a content creator relevant to the gem world wanted to get their videos on here, is it something that you guys choose? Is there somewhere? Is it something that you can just upload as long to? As it's gem, mineral, or fossil, meteorite related um, jewelry making, it it works. You know, so you can create, you know, those password protected uh, video tutorials or PDFs that a person can buy. Once they pay for it, they get it automatically to download and then... Is there anything that you can offer for free to the public? Yeah, there's some free tutorials on occasion that Susan puts on. She's one of the... one of the... busy instructors that are on the site. Um, so, she's featured on the homepage. Um, you can... Um, right here, here's a free tutorial on her YouTube channel to learn how to do wire wrapping. Fantastic. Because I'm sure, you know, I believe because of you and Sarah, this is going to blow up, bro. It's oh, going to get crazy. Too. How long has this been going on? So Pandemic-ish. Yeah, we pandemic-ish. We started it in the pandemic. Um, it was really kind of low-key at the beginning because it was just a couple of vendors that 
it's like there's no shows going on how are we gonna yeah i think a lot of people were even skeptical about the gem scene in, in general exactly so <laughs> so now we're we're ready to bring it to the to anyone joining us not just the local community you know we'd like it to be like an etsy like marketplace for gem mineral dealers um we were talking about like bulk material earlier and selenite and stuff so i saw that you obviously starlights are so particular that you have to put each an individual one right but say somebody had like a bunch of rose quartz tumbles Do, can they take a picture of the stack and just say, hey, rose quartz tumbles for sale, one dollar? Or do they have to individually pit every piece of rose quartz? No, they can. So like a lot of the wholesale dealers, mm -hmm. uh, if you've been in the wholesale. Yeah, I was just section. over there. So That's like, where I was talking, Sarah. JK, JK Stone um, has wholesale bags of, of, you know, they'll have like a flat. Um, uh, stones like this, you know, to where you can Oh, they, they seal it. Um, <coughs> well, actually, here's, here's a So, you, like, you know, they'll have a bag of quartz crystals right. that, you know, could be sold wholesale. Um, and, you know, most of them are have a similarity. Right. So you, you, know, you can list the quartz crystals. Anybody in the scene understands that this, the that, you know, this is acceptable. You're not going to get the exact same yeah. length and yeah. width and stuff and this is very fair especially for $35 that is a great deal <laughs> but um and, but that's wholesale only, and, so, and we are building a wholesale section on Rocky Gems so the wholesalers that, can that's very good because what I was getting at earlier is the protection you know honestly when someone's gonna scam you it's not usually over a pound of rose quartz tumbles right you know and like oh it looks so much darker in the picture and I got them and they're barely pink that's not the case in the in the wholesale where I mean in um bulk tumbles and stuff. That'll be like, oh, you know, a Lemurian crystal. You'll see like ten beauties and then you get this broken thing and Right. And that I think most people will take the time to post every individual one. You'll, I'm sure down the line more rules will have to come about because this is gonna blow up. It's gonna get crazy. Right. It's gonna be so many things. And just, just like eBay, we have an auction section, so you can run auctions on your Really? Is that already minerals. active right now? Yeah, that's already active. So every now and then there's a down period where no one's running an auction, but there are other times where there's so many auctions going on, it's like eBay. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. So you know. Fantastic. So we have the features all in place. And it's really up to the vendors what they want to do. So somebody might be running some live classes and wants to promote it. Uh, others might be running a whole bunch of auctions, stuff that they want to get sold in the next five or six days. And then, you know, you can buy buy and sell. We also have a vault for all the really high-priced items like museum pieces that nice for folks that are interested in that and they don't want to have to dig through everybody's page to find that one or two that is worthy of the vaults right that is brilliant um so yeah like so you know the higher price specimens um, that are showpieces for your collections <clears throat> now sorry for all the hard questions but can anybody charge whatever they want no matter what it is. Well, you know, so gems and minerals, it's it's all based on supply and demand. And Variety, what quantity, want. quality. A lot of vendors, when they sell something online, they'll Google what other people are. I was actually just teaching somebody about that. that so let's say you have Brazilian agate slabs that you want to sell, but you don't have no idea what to sell it for. You Google around to see what people on Etsy and eBay and Google shopping and Amazon. Which creates a healthy competition. Right. And then, but there's always going to be that person who's like, well, I'll put this Brazilian agate slice that's worth 20 to 30 bucks up for $1,000 to see if somebody buys it. And then people will see that. And, and they won't like, buy it. Yeah, any, yeah, yeah. Shop, any smart shopper will. And I, I guess that's, that's more things to think about down the road. When you guys have, right. you know, 50,000 different vendors. A lot's gonna change. So I yeah, guess. And, and you know, if somebody's putting something out for an outrageous price, um, 
most people are pretty smart online. Yeah, they're just going to oust themselves like, out of it. They'll be like, yeah, I'm not going to buy it. And, um, and then at that point, if they're putting ridiculous prices, um, are they going to want to go beyond 200 for any amount of money? You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like maybe yeah. they'll stop themselves. It's QR codes. People who want people to find their web shops, website, this website in their shop easy, it's easy to create a link or QR uh -huh. codes and such. We can put that, I mean, anyone can customize their homepage how they want. A lot of people have a little about section tells them how they got into gem and mineral collecting and, or selling. And you can pop a QR code on there for people to scan your home site, your website. So, but a lot, the benefit with Rocky Gems is that you don't have to invest in your own web host or, or domain and stuff. You can set up a shop there and that can be your home. And you know what a lot of people are always skeptical of is these behind the scenes huge multi-billion dollar corporation algorithms either keeping them some keeping their stuff and being seen or not but right. i mean and you're the guy and you're so, you're <laughs> you so know we what promote I mean? a lot of the shops and the listings on twitter um, instagram facebook so like every monday wednesday friday we, we're submitting you know items that are for sale to spread the word so you you get free advertising with your listings as well so awesome this is going to be huge i'm definitely going to get on it for sure <laughs> well, yeah i'd love to see some of your video tutorials so. yeah all the stuff i make in taos oh these are your beauties huh yeah those, those okay it's in the arts and crafts section so, so. be a little different because it's a craft of growing the crystal right it's, it's, it is mainly for kids so we have a kid section so the kids that are just getting into it have stuff to play around with so like you, you, i'm from washington state so you see i'm on vacation <laughs> so right oh now, yeah <laughs> you can only put on your wish list my items but Middle of next week, I'll be awesome. And there, there's going to be some things catering to um, display. Yeah, so fossils.com is a vendor, and they sell a lot of little displays for showing off your your gems and minerals. These are awesome. Yeah, and she makes uh, Charlotte's Web of Creations makes uh, little art uh, pieces, and then you have jewelry makers and amulet pouch. What a trip! I couldn't pull that off. I don't know about you, yeah. no, I, I <laughs> but it's not, it's lovely. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tom? Yep. Tom, it was a pleasure talking to you, dude. You guys are great. Sarah's great. Uh, I'm Sandra. I'm, I'm sorry? Sandra. Sandra, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> I'm super excited to, um, to get it on this. It's about time. It was only a matter of time. And it's, it's so awesome that someone like you and Sandra are doing it because Sandra's a real stand-up person. She, she could is. charge so much more for vending here if she wanted to. But she's about and, um, community and, and the club and keeping us all together. And a lot of ven venues don't think like that. Yeah, all. They're, they're all in it for the money. And, I heard um, that she used to sell herself and yes. that has yeah. probably keeping it real. And well, she, she's just too big. She, she still sells, but... She hasn't for a couple of years because she's been so busy with everything. <laughs> and so you folks are here during the September show. We have a September show. And uh, during Tucson, you were on the Mineral, Mineral Mile. And yes, so she has a show in Tucson, a of Oracle, two in Texas, Conroe and Plano, and then two Denver shows. Awesome. So. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you.